Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss question number 4B of this year's ethics paper. The question asks us to differentiate between moral intuition and moral reasoning. These two are most basic fundamental human faculty. These two are intrinsic instruments that we hold as moral agent. Both of them work in tandem, reinforcing each other to develop moral principles. Our understanding, our sense and concept of right and wrong, in a sense, our ethical knowledge develops on these two. These are two such fundamental basic human faculties that even precedes formulation of ethical principles. Intuition and reasoning, they both go into justification and development of ethical principles, code of conduct, standards of right and wrong. So as such, they both are fundamental in the ecosystem of ethics, but yet there are some differences, which is the demand of the question. So let's talk about the difference first, and then we'll go beyond the scope of the question to enhance further our understanding of these two concepts. The question demands us to differentiate between these two. Moral intuition and moral reasoning represent two different approaches to ethics, determining right and wrong in their own way, but largely they work in unison, they work in tandem, they work in the same ethical ecosystem. But if we have to differentiate, there are certain ways of differentiating it. For instance, moral intuition is fast. It is quick because it is based on our in instinctive feeling our instinctive judgment of right and wrong. It is based on emotions, it is based on feeling, it is based on our conscience. So it is fast. It does not require elaborate, systematic, extensive thinking, reasoning, logical step-by-step -step thinking. So it is quick. That's point number one. In contrast, moral reasoning will be slow because it will involve conscience, conscious, deliberate, step-by-step -step process of ethical deliberation and logical justification logic moral reasoning requires logical step-by-step -step thinking there is no jump in the thought and there is nothing based on feeling or emotion logical proof moral proof is given for every step of thinking so it is slow although it is slow but it is more reliable but that's difference on one fundamental level of Speedy, quick judgment generally comes with moral intuition and more analytical, more reliable judgment comes from moral reasoning. So one is fast, one is slow. Because the nature we already have discussed why one is fast and one is slow because moral intuition is largely automatic. The intuition appears itself as a moral truth based on some gut feeling. But moral reasoning is not automatic, it is deliberate and the right or wrong standard is reached through thorough examination, evaluation and then giving proper moral justification to our thought. When we encapsulate, wrap up our feeling, our thought in, with proper justification, that requires moral reasoning. So A, it is more reliable and B, it is more persuasive. Moral intuition can give you a sense of right and wrong. But the way we communicate with others is through reasoning. So generally, moral intuition and moral reasoning works in tandem. But if we have to differentiate, these are fundamental difference between the two. Moral intuition relies on feelings. It relies on emotion. It relies on our innate moral sense of right and wrong. To club these and give a larger term from the context of the syllabus, moral intuition largely comes from our conscience. In our syllabus, conscience is mentioned, and conscience is the manifestation of our inner sense of right and wrong. And that's quick, of course, and <coughs> mostly doesn't require, it doesn't require elaborate thinking. It gives us sense, an intuitive moral sense of right and wrong. So it is based on conscience, it is based on our moral perception, our moral sensitivity to say. Reasoning relies on the process of analysis. It comes from the rational faculty of human being. So they are different, but in a sense, they're also tied up, which we'll talk in a while. 
But largely, this, these are the differences on fundamental level. Moral intuition provides moral reflexes, a quick judgment. And that has to be thoroughly examined before it has to be relied on and made a bedrock for standard for code of conduct for ethical behavior. But it is a reflex which needs further examination, of course, but it provides quick judgment. That reflex has to be further systematically studied, examined through reasoning. So before they become moral codes or moral standards. These are the difference. You can give some examples to enhance the understanding of the difference. If you see the decisions that people take, they are mostly moral reflexes and they are based on moral intuition. But further, you give weight by giving moral arguments to your moral intuition by developing some principles out of it. But in the beginning, it's the instinct. It was the instinct of Buddha that let him come out of the palace. It is the instinct. It was also the instinct of Gandhi to call off the non-cooperation movement after the Chori Chora incident. It was also the ins instinct of Abraham Lincoln to fight for abolition of slavery. But later, all of them developed elaborate principles. You must have heard of Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks, she started the anti-racial movement in the West. She refused to give up her seat on the bus. There, back then, they had the practice of segregation of seats between blacks and whites. She was sitting on the seat, not allo allo allocated to black, but she refused to give up her seat. That's basically coming from the instinct that racial segregation is not right. Later on, you give argument, you develop principle of equality and liberty and freedom and autonomy. But basically, first, it comes from instinct and that instinct is that that is moral intuition. The decision of Edward Snowden to leak the secret surveillance project of US government must also, be ha must also have come from his instinct. Later on, he gave moral justification for it, but the impulsive, the immediate decision, the quick, fast decision that a man takes, that largely comes from the instinct. <coughs> but later, that instinct translates into moral arguments that comes from reasoning. Martin Luther King Jr., he appealed to the principles of justice and human rights very elaborately in, in, in his fight against racism, apartheid practices, etc. So when you bring in these principles and you elaborately develop them to give weight to your argument, to your thoughts and your feeling, that comes out of moral reasoning. The examples that I gave you earlier that Gandhi went with non-violence. And that is, was the reason why he called off non-cooperation movement. But later he also developed an elaborate principle. And his argument, and I don't, I, you just listen to the argument and see if you can grasp it. Mahatma Gandhi said that it is only through non-violence that the dignity of both oppressed and the oppressor can be maintained. It is only through non-violence. So he later reasoned about it. This is his moral reasoning that is giving forward to adopt non-violence for freedom struggle. Similarly, Abraham Lincoln also gave his reason that slavery doesn't align with the principles of liberty, dignity, human right, freedom, autonomy, and the moral stature, the moral position of the country at the global fora. He developed reasons, but he was not fighting for slavery. For these reasons, he was fighting for slavery, to abolish slavery out of his own instinctive feeling, out of his own inner sense of right and wrong, out of his own consciousness out of his moral intuition, right? So, so these are the examples that you can put forward to differentiate between these two. But as a concluding remark, you have to identify that both are needed for comprehensive ethical development. Reason alone can be detached from human sensitivity, from human reality. And intuition alone can be vague. Unless you give it a concrete form through principles, you can't communicate it. You can't use it as a tool of persuasion and human progress. You can't use it as a tool to bring others on the moral path. They together provide the ethical foundation. So formally, this will end the answer with the idea of they having some differences. But uh, as a concluding remark, you also forge the nature of two such that both are interlinked and both are required for a sound moral development. So that ends the answer, but let's go a little bit further in our discussion to see as to how these two are related practically through some philosophies 
and some part of our syllabus. In your syllabus, when you go towards the governance section, you will find a topic, ethical dilemma, ethical concerns and dilemmas in public and private institution. Ethical dilemma is an important part of the syllabus from which the case studies are made out. Different case studies will have a different kind of ethical dilemma. So this is a part of a syllabus that requires intensive understanding and the way it is solved comes from both. Any ethical dilemma requires combination of both moral intuition and moral reasoning. Intuition provides the moral impulse, the moral reflex. And reasoning articulates the ethical justification for that intuition. For example, the feminist movement, some of the feminists, they have used uh, various logical argument for the rights of females. You can say that females, they are, they are equal to males and they have uh, equal human rights and you can argue like this. But many of the females, they have, sorry, feminists, they have argued that females, female, they are man's other. So you don't have to just give female right for the, word, for the sake of female right. It's also about the question of man's overall, overall quality of life. Women are man's other. So if you're not giving right to women, then the man's quality of life is going to suffer. So this kind of argument is put forward. But, but actually the feminists, they are motivated by their moral intuition. But they develop moral reasoning actually to progress, put forward, give, give steam, give weight <coughs> to their moral intuition. That's how ethical dilemmas are resolved. Ethical dilemmas, you, you solve the problem between the economic development and environmental conservation. The motivation for environmental conservation or other dilemmas that comes in public and private institutions that come as an instinct. But later, you develop moral reasoning to effectively resolve ethical dilemma to put across your point of view and effectively convince and persuade others to look at, the, look at things the way you are seeing. You can't transfer your intuition, but you can transfer your reasoning. So intuition will be very vague. It will be ineffective without moral reasoning. They work in tandem. And the best philosophical ground that I can give you comes from the great Immanuel Kant. Immanuel Kant believed that human reason contains an a, a priori moral intuition. Reason itself contains moral intuition. And that's how he joined the two things. Actually, in philosophical development, there are debates between moral reasoning and moral intuition. Some of the philosophers, they rely heavily on moral intuition, like Plato. And uh, the philosopher just before Immanuel Kant, like uh, David Hume. David Hume valued sentiment, feeling, emotion, intuition alongside with reason. Reasons are important, but he was tilted towards the sentiment and emotion to develop ethical principles. There are philosophers who are tilted towards reason, but they both, all, all, all philosophies, all school of thought, they value both of them, but it's a question of balance. Immanuel Kant had the best of the balance among all school of thought. By incorporating both, he actually joined the different school of thought, mostly called as rationalist and empiricist in Western philosophy. Empiricist, they value more feeling, they value more emotions, they also they value observational learning. And rationalist, they believe in some kind of a priori knowledge that human mind has. And intuitively, you can get there. Of course, with application of reason, but the, val the, the proportionally emotion, intuition is extremely important. But Immanuel Kant beautifully combined both, saying that human reason contains an a priori moral intuition that allows us to recognize the authority of moral law. So it begins with moral intuition and rationality constructs the duties and the maxims and the standards. They are building on an intuition. So actually the nature of two is such that UPSC must have asked to compare and contrast or asking the relation rather than asking the difference but because they intrinsically are joined with each other. So a better comparison would be to ask both or rather <coughs> the relation of one vis-a-vis -vis the other, not only the difference because they are intrinsically linked. If you look at the philosophy of utilitarians like John Stuart Mill or even better of Jeremy Bentham, they have based uh, their philosophy on 
largely of Je Jeremy Bentham even more of on reasoning. They have Jeremy Bentham has de you developed elaborate calculus, which is purely based on reasoning to develop the principle of maximizing the happiness. Utilitarianism is about having maximum good for maximum number of people. And with pure reasoning, Jeremy Bentham wanted to reach towards such a state. But John Stuart Mill came later and brought the element of intuition along with reasoning to make the principle of utilitarianism even better. Similarly, if you look at the principle of John Rawls, John Rawls relied more on moral intuition about fairness and justice. The famous idea of John Rawls, when you study more of philosophy, you'll be exposed to these ideas. And then you can retrospect link about what we're talking right now. John, uh, John Rawls talked about veil of ignorance, that you wear the veil of ignorance, generally the veil that is Gungat, Parda, Abaya, Burka, that women used to cover the face, but that is veil of cloth. John Rawls asked us to wear the veil of ignorance. You forget your current state right now, your current interest, whom you are related to, what are your plans, what you are seeking currently, economically or otherwise. You forget everything, you go to the original position and look at things from the top. And then you see what is the right thing to be done. And there you can combine both intuition and reasoning to reach to the right point as to what is the right thing to be done. And then you come down to this position, worldly position, and do that regardless of what your current interests are. So philosophy actually combines both and philosophy becomes powerful when it combines both the elements. For example, the philosophy of Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi emphasized on conscience. And that is the inner voice, that is moral intuition. But his notion of duty, dutifulness, commitment towards truth and non-violence, that is part of moral reasoning. Similarly, Dr. Ambedkar's concept of constitutional morality, <coughs> that is based on both intuition and reasoning. Right. So basically, the more important idea between moral intuition and moral reasoning is the combination and, and their existence as one reinforcing the other. Now, from your syllabus, uh, let me come to the conclusion with more depth and you will really enjoy, I hope, this idea if you can feel it. In your syllabus, there's a topic called as emotional intelligence. And if you have a little bit of exposure of emotional intelligence, you will know that there are four or five components. Some people consider four, some people consider five. But the four that is common to all school of thought is self-awareness, self-regulation, empathy, social skill. There's a fifth one sometimes people take as motivation. Now, if you sit down and think, where is moral reasoning is in EI and where is moral intuition? You'll find this beautiful link between moral reasoning and intuition connected by EI. In EI, there's a component, empathy. Empathy has been considered by psychologists as a component of emotional intelligence. And empathy is that human value that helps us understand others' perspective through reasoning. Sympathy is when you, sympathy is when you actually understand others' problem. But empathy is when you understand and feel you sim simulate same kind of environment that the person is going through in your mind and feel how perhaps you feel to a certain degree the same way as the other person by simulating the scenario of the other person in your mind. Um, that requires reasoning. That requires on initial level some intuition and reasoning. So empathy in EI, this is based on both intuition and reasoning. And a person who has high emotional intelligence, he's able to translate his intuition towards ethical principles. A person with very high emotional intelligence just can't pass by people who are suffering. You can't. You, with very high emotional intelligence, meaning you have very high sensitivity, very high empathy, you have very high moral sensitivity and moral intuition. So you capture the problem immediately. That's quick. And that's not all. When you capture the problem, you understand the other's perspective through reasoning very, very well. And since you understand, you also solve. So empathy translates into compassion as well. So this aspect of EI actually links both component, basic faculty for ethics that a man needs, moral intuition and moral reasoning. And that's part of your syllabus. Think about it, how EI captures both of them. I'll give you one another example to end the discussion with. And this should give you really good feeling. I don't know if you have seen it this way earlier or not. 
in the second bullet of your syllabus there's a topic called as attitude extremely extremely important thing in the larger scheme of thing attitude just precedes behavior attitude has three components if you don't know you will know very shortly whenever you do the paper this is a very basic thing attitude is one of the large focus of your syllabus and when you do attitude you will get to know that attitude has three components affective component cognitive component behavioral component see some people call it abc component some people call it cab component cab component there are three components effective coming from the word affection or emotion effective component involves emotion and feeling towards an idea person or any attitude object uh, this comes from moral intuition the way you feel about certain thing any person any place any idea anything any attitude object forms one component of your attitude and that feeling and emotion comes instinctively from moral intuition but there's another component called as cognitive component this cognitive component is information the knowledge that you have also part of your belief goes into cognition so this 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 develops out of moral reasoning process and the third component behavioral component which is the overall evaluation of that attitude object and your final tendency to behave in a particular way towards attitude object that is the behavioral component of attitude and it's linked and develops out of the first two component and this is what we have been talking about all along in the video that your final principles your standards your tendency that develops out of both of them and attitude as a concept as a psychological concept captures both of them through the affective component and the cognitive component that develops the behavioral component so the final behavior comes out of both moral intuition and moral reasoning isn't that beautiful so this idea was already there in the syllabus not explicitly mentioned but implicitly it's part of ethics and this is how psychology is developed so on a very fundamental level the question was pretty basic